when I say it, it makes sure I do it, you know? <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. The show begins in three, two, one. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm really sorry, excuse me. Um, hey, is Disney World in Orlando still closed? Because I have a cousin that, like, practically lives there, and if she can't be there every day, I think she might die. Watch my work. The Morning Stream smells like apple pie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for October 16th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Ibbett, as always. Hi. Hello. Hey, I mean, almost, almost always on the days that uh, Bobby or TV's Travis don't sub in for me. Yeah. But, rare, uh, though. Yeah. Very rare. Rare. Yeah. rare. I've, got a pretty, I've got a pretty good record. Pretty yeah. good record here, Scott. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, if you think about it, we are at 2,720 episodes. Yeah. That is a pretty consistent show and for I've, the last and 12 I've years. And I've probably missed less than 15. <laughs> oh, easily. Easily less than that. Probably under 10, yeah. if I had to guess. And who? Oh, I mean, I, and I've probably about the same for me where we have no show, so you never know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, anyway, it's good to see you all. Hope you're all having a fantastic Wednesday. And uh, we got stuff to talk about. we got all kinds of things lined up. It's a show of shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. You guys, it's your as, show of shows. As we hurtle towards, what are we, 30 days from the uh, U.S. election, I think? Yeah, 21, isn't it? Isn't it three? Where, wasn't yesterday like the three-week? Let's see. That sound I think, right? I think yesterday was the three-week uh, uh, 21 deal. Like, oh, there's a countdown. This is cool. You're right. We are at 19, uh, sorry, 19 days, 15 hours, 45 minutes, and 42 seconds as of my reading. That's right, and we're and we're at uh, uh, four hundred days until someone stops some one particular person stops uh, claiming that they won the election. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that timeline. Anyone? Oh, I'm hoping. I am hoping for that timeline because obviously we know what that means. We know that means you know something good. And, yeah, uh, I guess so. It also means a lot of potential disarray. I don't know. I hate this oh, I so bad. The whole yeah. thing just has given me gas. I do too. It it's. Yeah, hate it's, it. uh, hate it. <sighs> I'm, I, I mean, look, I've tried to avoid it. I've done better than most most times. The last two election cycles, I was way too. I've dialed been impressed. In. Yeah, you had you had quite a run there of um, uh, threads. Well, not not a long run, but like you had the occasional like you know messages on threads, but nothing like when you. When uh, when we were on X and you were <laughs> mm-hmm. posting uh, back in the 2016, uh, like 2015 through well late 2015 up through 2019, I'd say mm-hmm. I was a mess. I hated it so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I got a little smarter, and then 2020 happened, and I got a little wrapped up in that, but then you know eased off. And this time I have been, I've tried. There were a couple times where I'll poke my head in and go ah. And then I'm like, yeah, damn it, yeah. no! You know what you're new. You know I'm, how to not do this. Back up. You don't need to do this. You know. I'm just glad that we've got generative AI, which has kind of uh, <laughs> taken, like, been a nice little side focus for you uh, on, on threads. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to I politics. hate it. I hate it. I do love your. I do just love the occasional like. I get. I get notified, of course, when you post on threads. Like, yeah, oh, here's a recommended reply from Scott to somebody else. I look at him like. Yep. All right. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's any, right in the world. <laughs> it's any time somebody says, uh, "Hey, I created my most ma- my biggest yeah. masterpiece," yeah. and I'm like, right. "I can't avoid your bait. I have to take it. I have to take your <laughs> stupid bait. I hate it so much." Right. Right. Anyway, yeah. so keep your eyes on anyway, the prize, everybody. Uh, now, 15 hours, 43 minutes, and 34 seconds away. So uh. great. Uh, can't wait. <laughs> yeah, really, I really can't wait till it's over. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait till it's over. Obviously, there's one outcome I'd prefer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Vastly. And I just can't believe. I can't believe that the other outcome is even possible mm-hmm. with people yep. who have brains in the world. But yeah, makes no you know, sense. That's, that's all I'll say. Anyway, wish us luck, rest of the world. It's on us yeah, now exactly. to see what happens. Uh, hey. You want to? Yeah. We talk yeah. about like Let's a bad talk about fun stuff. We talk about a bad stink uh, when we were talking about hockey players and their gear and stuff. Yep. Well, uh, Jeannie Soros says this regarding Scott and the hockey equipment stench. 
She says this. Book. Yeah. She says. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I used to work in, uh, sorry, I used to work for the in-house video crew for the Detroit Red Wings. That's actually pretty cool. It's cool, except for the fact that it was the Detroit Red Wings, but that's, you know, yeah. it's cool. Everything else about that's really cool. I was more of a Flyers fan <laughs> back in the day. Um, they're, they're big time rivals with the Avalanche, so I can't like, I'm, I'm, I'm just not supposed to like anything Detroit Red, Red Wings really. Yeah, no, but if you get knocked out in some playoffs or whatever and Detroit goes forward, what do you do? You go okay. Now I'll root for Detroit, or is it? Are you just um, mad the rest of the year until the next year? Or what do you do? No, I pretty much would root for whoever Detroit Red Wings are playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have. I honestly don't have anything against the team or any of the players. It's just. It's just. I. You know. I, it's like being predetermined to just dislike the the your your home team's rival. Yeah, and, I uh, get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like BYU and Utah here. Nobody. Nobody, nobody crosses the divide and shakes hands. Yeah, it's exactly. But Jeannie Saris, I will always root for you. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. <laughs> no question about it. Anyway, she says, we were working on a college tournament at the arena, and I had to go on the ice after a championship game of the tournament. That is a stench I will never forget until the day I die. It was a combination <laughs> of BO, wet fabric, and skunk. It's up oh. there with the worst smells ever. You know what? I can imagine it. It's pretty close. It's adjacent to what I was going off about, and uh, I don't envy your time on that ice. That sounds terrible. That just seems horrendous, and that's just being out on the ice, like right after the game. That's not being in the locker room. Mm -hmm. That's a much more open area mm -hmm. with with way more, you know, a lot more uh, the space for the air to travel and, yeah. and get away and disperse. Yeah, I used to wonder why at our the local uh, Grizzlies games when they would bring out the Zamboni guy, the Zamboni yeah. guy would wear a little mask. And I used to wonder why. Uh, this is yeah, a long time ago, yeah. like before COVID that's, and everything. And I was like, why are you wearing a mask? I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. It Apparently that's why. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have to do with breathing cold air or anything like that. Or Yeah, it's it's uh, wow. And and we, we love, hey, uh, yeah, go ahead. Jeannie Saris, very, very important question. So you worked for the in-house video crew. Tell me you were responsible for the kiss cam. Like, tell me that you had oh, yeah. control of like directing where the kiss cam went and all the other the specialty cams and stuff like that. Oh my gosh! Hockey is the f is uh, that's when I see clips of a kiss cam. It's almost always a hockey game. It must be like bigger there than other stuff. Like I don't yeah, see you don't it in really see games. the kiss cam at like football games. You just see the mm. the fans cheering. I mean, we see them. Basketball games, I think, have the kiss cam as well too. Of Do course, they? But, yeah, um, sometimes. Yeah. but hockey, but man, you guys usually, get into it. You guys are always kissing. Yeah, you know, it's pretty Did great. You hear the story about uh, Billy Crystal and uh, Jack Nicholson. Mm -mm. So there are floor seats at a um, uh, Lakers game, yeah, and um, and they're sitting there next to each other, kind of chatting. And oh, hey, Billy, great to have you here joining me. And uh, all of a sudden, um, they put the camera on the two of them, and the the audience cheers, and they're like, "Hey, how's it going, everybody?" And then they put the overlay on for the kiss cam, and <laughs> Billy turns to Jack and says, "Do you want it? What do you want to do? You want to do it? Should we give the people what they want?" He's like. All right, but no tongue. <laughs> <laughs> this really happened. I love this. It's really happened, and so you can, you can Google. Uh, That's uh, amazing. Photo of Jack Nicholson and Billy Crystal kissing on the kiss cam. I love that. Hold on. Yeah. Oh wow. Hold on, Jack Nicholson. Here we go. Why won't it come up? Okay, Jack Nicholson kissing. I gotta see this. This is amazing. So right now, <laughs> oh my gosh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like horrifying. A, just, just yeah, is that great? I know it's not a very, it's not a very, uh, uh, it's not a very comfortable looking kiss either. It's no, like a, it's awkward as hell. When yeah. did this happen? This recent? Uh, no, I'm looking at Billy Crystal's hair, and that is not, um, that is not current day Billy Crystal hair color. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this. Looks... But he just talked about it on uh, Kimmel the other night, and uh, uh, they posted the photo, and it's just so funny. Is Jack still going to? He still goes to games. I don't know if he still goes. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder. I mean, he's looking pretty pretty crispy now. He is. Yeah. 2004, it looks like, is when that happened. Oh, a 20-year anniversary we got going here. Fantastic. I guess so, of the kiss, yeah. Yeah. The kiss that changed <laughs> the world. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, I always like it when there's a real celebrity at the game, and it, and they do the, you know the kiss cams at the hockey games where it's like, who the doppelganger one. So it's, it's not a kiss yeah. cam, but it's yeah. like, here's... A picture of George Clooney, and then they'll show a guy that kind of looks like George Clooney, and yeah. he cheers, and everyone cheers, and then it's like, oh, here's uh, someone from the office, and he looks like, you know, Kevin from the office, or 
And then I love it when they're like, okay, here's a shot of, I don't know, Amy Poehler from Parks and Rec. And then they pan the camera over and it's actually Amy Poehler in and the it's audience. It's actually Amy Poehler after doing the doppelgangers for a while. I yeah. like that a lot when they do that. Did you see, speaking of Parks and Rec, there was another one just recently, um, some game where Aubrey Plaza was sitting in the audience. Oh, where she's and reading? They, yeah. <laughs> and she's reading a book. <laughs> she just looks up. <laughs> Makes like a smirk and then goes back to her book. Most Aubrey Plaza thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> I freaking love her, dude. She's, yeah. She's too. great. Who would who would have thought that out of Parks and Rec, well, whatever, a whole bunch of people did things, but, you know. Yeah. Now you have, does that make two in the MCU? Her and, uh, and, her Pratt? and Pratt. Um, who else? That's a really good question. Um, from Retta or Aziz Ansari yet? Uh, uh, no Rob Lowe yet? Oh, Adam Scott was, well, not really MCU. He was in uh, Madam Web. Oh, <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Well, yeah. <laughs> what about Ron Swanson? What was he in? Is he in something? Oh, is he? Has He's he in something? so many things. He's got to, Offerman's got to be in something. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Last can't think of anything <laughs> MCU that he's done. Hey, Claire. Well, of course, he was in The Last of Us. Yeah, Thank Claire, you, Claire, Last of Us is not in the MCU, just so you're only, aware. Only the best episode of The Last <laughs> of Us, but uh, yeah. Yeah, but nobody, there's no crossover with freaking uh, Falcon or right, right. Uh, the Green Yeah, listener. I feel like we, we should get uh, Rashida Jones would be a good addition to the MCU. She's, she's badass, yeah, especially I'd... after watching that, um, that robot Apple TV plus series that uh oh yeah she was in silo as well yeah. the first season of silo she was great in that yeah and that yeah. new trailer oh, yeah. dropped I'm briefly so, uh, super briefly but yeah i'm so excited for that new thing yeah she yeah. was only in like what two episodes or something but and a couple of flashbacks it's not enough she should have been in that more yeah but it was an important you're character catherine you guys are saying catherine han did catherine han have a regular spot on parks and rec or was she was she even a guest uh I'm trying to remember Catherine Hahn on uh She might have. She might have been. Um She was a guest she's a guest star in a lot of things, I guess. She is, yeah. Season two says Rainbow Bright. There yeah, we I don't go. Know, okay. to check that out. That's the thing that Kim and I have been talking about a rewatch. We're in the mood. That first season's yeah, weird though. Parks and Rec. Yeah, the first season wasn't sure what it wanted to do. Right, I know, and like Pratt is a Pratt is like a, a douche. She's like a total tool. Oh, she ran Paul Rudd's campaign. Oh, right. Okay, so there you go. Two more. Yeah. Oh, right. All right. Pretty good. Well done, Parks and Rec. You got a lot of crossover good. going there. Yeah. More good. than The Office, I think. Well, wait. I think we not... need uh, Jenny Slate to somehow make her way into the MCU as well. That'd be great. <laughs> she's probably done some cartoon voices, I'll bet. But I don't know if those are MCU. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet she has. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Uh, all right. We have apparently the Potter stuff wrong. We were talking about Slytherin, and there's no good Slytherin sure. house people. Right, right, yeah, we were besmirching how Smith Slytherin is what we were doing. Yeah, besmithering them. Besmithering it. Uh, this came in from nobody's name, so we'll just read it. Uh, in defense of my fellow Slytherins, or as they wrote, slit nurins. Uh, <laughs> hell, that's S L Y T. Slytherins. <laughs> Uh, not all Slytherins are evil, even in the books or movies. Narcissa Malfoy, Horace Slughorn, potions teacher, or even Draco are not evil. Well, Draco has a moment, dude. Yeah. Like, Draco's a pretty big yeah. dick. He may have some redemption toward the end, but he's, he's a dick for a he's, while. He's borderline uh, Joffrey. You know, he's like... <laughs> he's, 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 pro, some, he's like proto-Joffrey. He's like the he's worst. Proto, he is proto-Joffrey. Yeah, exactly. I realize he does things clear up for him later. I understand that, but... Yes, exactly. It, he's a change of heart, but, you know, so does... Took a long time. Name, uh, Darth Vader even had a, you know, got nice at the end, but uh, come on. Sure. <laughs> and you could, you could say that... Uh, Oh my gosh! Why can't I think of his name? Uh, uh, freaking the most important Slytherin of all time, uh, the teacher, uh, uh, Alan. What's his name? Why can't I think of his name? Snape. Jeez, Louise. Oh yeah, yeah. Why was Snape hard to remember? Anyway, yeah, Snape is a great example of that. Yeah, yeah he was a guy that kind of fooled you into thinking he was a dick, and then, spoiler, things changed mm. toward the end. There, it turns out he was always trying to do a decent thing. But anyway, yeah, no, we get it. We get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All it right. says, according to official canon, Merlin was a Slytherin. On the other hand, Peter Pettigrew, who helped Voldemort regain his full body, was a Gryffindor. Well, you can't win them all. 
aren't those, isn't that what they call the exception that proves the rule? Mm, yeah. <laughs> also, you know, you can't look at outliers, right? You have to look at the right, the, exactly. the full yes. body of the of the Slytherin the Slytherin lineup for a long time. Bunch of dicks. That's just how it was. It's just how it is. Yeah. yeah it turns exactly. out turns out the authors have been a bit dick. Anyway. <laughs> uh hey, I gotta tell you about the thing I saw and it pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah, please do. All right. In our neighborhood, we have some pretty uh, easily accessible drop-off points for dog poopy bags and all that. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking, you're going to run into one. And there'll be bags there for you to take if you're running out. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's what you want. Very nice. Very nice thing to people. And people volunteer voluntarily probably provide those as opposed to like the the city or anything. Yeah, it's just a thing people do. They're always full. I think the HOA does the emptying, but that's fine. They're always they're always clean. It's never a problem. It's never overstacked. It's just a good we do a pretty good job of that here. And I, as a conscientious dog owner and -hmm. member of my society, pick up after my dog. And I don't care how nasty it is, I'll pick it up in its warm, wet form. Exactly. exactly. It is absolutely the right thing to do. So what I'm doing out there with the dog is picking up, putting him in the bag, go to the station, put it in the thing. And I even bring my own bags. I have a roll of home that we use here. I just pull off two, three sheets, take it with me on the walk. May mm-hmm. I, maybe I use them, maybe I don't. But I always mm-hmm. we're always prepared. But you've got them in case you need them. Yep. All right. Now, another feature of the neighborhood in certain spots, they're all kind of spread out. But there's little signs that the city put up that say, um, for the good of the neighborhood, please you know, pick up after your dog or some words like that. And yeah. they're just little signs. Well, one of the signs that's kind of two, three blocks away from me, I notice as I'm approaching the sign, there's something around it, something going on there. I couldn't tell what was going on. It was like a weird something, some buildup around mm-hmm. the sign. Mm-hmm. So I get closer and closer, and I see what somebody has done. It is covered in dog poo, both out of bags and in some bags, just all around it, like almost like a seance circle around the sign <laughs> of dog like poo. Like an intentional circle, like, like you know. Yeah. Like. Oh, geez. I don't know what they were. I mean, obviously some kid or something. Who knows? Like, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I was so annoyed because I was just like, w- either they're making a statement like, these are poops we found laying around and nobody picked up, so oh, your signs sure. are no good. Maybe they were making a statement. I, boy, I even feel not. like Subaru Sally isn't going to do something like that. I feel like that's, you know. <laughs> Subaru Sally. Subaru Sally. You can visualize Subaru Sally. Oh, 100%. Right? Like, 100% yeah, you can. Yeah. All I got to do is park, yeah. go to Park City, and I'll and I'll run into about five hundred Subaru Sallies on my way up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Boulder is full of Subaru Sallies. <laughs> so I was I was presented with a situation where I was like, if this is one or two or three bags, I just pick them up and take them somewhere. Yeah, but I couldn't yeah. do that, dude. It was a load. It was like that's a that sounds like a lot. It sounds like you would have had to uh, you would have been there for half an hour, like yeah, bagging poop like a big uh, like a big bucket's worth. Like a large paint Oof. bucket's worth of, of dog dung. And I just oh, I decided, geez. well, I don't know what to do. So I took a picture, sent it to my friend who is associated with the HOA. It doesn't do anything for oh, him, but he knows good. people. Yeah. And I just said, hey, I'm not trying to care in this or anything. Right. This seems pretty stupid. So or Maybe bring maybe bring a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> Come here and bring a shovel. Yeah, maybe bring a hazmat suit and three men and uh, get it taken care of. Anyway, uh, hey, yeah. how did, how did, uh, how'd Trivia Night go? You went last night. Uh, right? It came out well. We we took second place. Um, we lost to to a, just a couple who were sitting by themselves, um, uh, and and didn't look. I mean, you can kind of spot the people who are real trivia nerds. I mean, I <laughs> work with a lot of. I play with a lot of them. Sure. Um, but uh, these these two didn't look like it. But they, you know, they seem to do all right. But there's another team there that we think. Like for a while, there was at the place we go, there was a cheating scandal. We never found out for sure what team it was. Although I think somebody, Ooh. one of the other teams, said they said they told us which team it was, and it's this team that was there last night. Are they and, are they known for? I mean, was there a reputation around these people, or is this a big surprise um, to everybody? It, it wasn't a surprise. Like they, you know, they're they always have their phones out. Um, uh, and in the old format, you actually used your phone or a laptop or an iPad to submit your answers. So basically, you had to, uh, um, you know, you log onto a site and then you put your answers in. And so there's, you know, it's really just like, well, there's nothing really we can do. There, you know, there, it's it's you're using electronic devices to play the game, and we we can 
kind of walk around and see if you're pulling up a browser and looking up an answer, but really we have a hard time wow. doing that, managing nine teams of people and, sure. and seeing what they do. Yeah. So for about two months or a month and a half, um, they actually didn't have trivia at this place. There were too many technical issues. The The woman who ran it kept having laptop issues. And so um, so they said, all right, we're going to look at a different uh, setup here and we'll let you all know when it um, when it starts back up. So he started up last night with a new one called DJ Trivia. And I've never played DJ Trivia before. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the format because it's a slower game. The, um, the one they did have had seven rounds of between six and 10 questions each. So, so you'd be doing, I think we, you do like 75 questions a night with that one. Yeah. This one has four rounds of five questions each, each. So you're basically answering 20 questions. So in the DJ format though, you're answering them between sets or something like music. You're yeah. answering, they, they play one song. So you, they ask a question, then you've got the length of the song to get oh, your answer in. So okay. it's two hours and about 20 questions. And it's like, all right, well, you know, this would be, this could go a little bit faster. Mm, I get it. Um, but they have screens all over, like basically their little rotating PowerPoint display of rules says <laughs> no phones even out on the table. Like, you know, this is all paper based trivia. So you're writing an answer and you're taking it up to the guy or he's coming around and picking up your piece of paper. And, and there's a thing like no, you know, phones down, uh, phones out of sight. If we see if we see you on your phone, you get a warning. And then the second time, um, you're getting zero points for for the round or for the game or whatever. Sure. So like, great, we're totally we we're fine with the format. We don't cheat. We're like, great. Now you can impose any limitations you want on us, and we will adhere to them because we we believe in the sanctity of the game. Well, this other team uh, uh, was there, and they, I don't know what what this one guy does for a living if he has to have a computer out in front of him because he's monitoring norad or something and he has to make sure <laughs> remotely that the systems are all up and running yeah um but <laughs> i love that idea we got to go to defcon 3 but i'm at a trivia thing so keep like a trivia tonight yeah. so i'll keep an eye on things <laughs> so he had his he has his his um tablet out i couldn't really tell if it was an ipad or whatever tablet but he has it out and um and he uh, basically is just turning the brightness down all the way down. Now, from where I'm sitting, I've got a light that kind of reflects right down on it and shines back at me mm. from upstairs, yeah. and uh, or from from up at the rafters. And so I can see that it's on, but maybe somebody kind of walking around and seeing that it's off, you know, can sure. uh, can tell uh, or can't tell that it's on. Sure. But there's no way to know for you know, for sure if he's cheating, he just might have to have this thing on for whatever he's doing. So second round comes and I noticed that the host came over and talked and talked to him and just said, no, you got to close it. I didn't say anything to him. None of nobody on our team said, Oh, check out this guy, but somebody may have. And so he actually closed it. Okay. Now the, the final question in the round is a dumb, You lose all the points for that round. And keep going. Sorry, I, I think my new internet choked. Oh, did it? Okay. I think we're okay though. Okay. Uh, let me make sure the now chat. Let's see. Let me make sure. Yeah. Let me make sure the chat spins up. It looks like it's back. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. That's all interesting. Right. All right, you okay, guys. Should be, we right. should be good. back. Okay. Sorry, Brian. Continue. Good. No, it's all right. I think I yeah I paused in time for uh, uh, to not to not miss anything. So the guy came and told him he closed his his laptop or uh, tablet or whatever. Right now the final question is this double or nothing, and you're you're basically wagering all the points you've made on that round. And the question was, what is Vanilla Ice's real name? And we knew this right off the bat. Oh, of We're, course you, you know, did. Of course yeah, you knew that one. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. an easy one for Brian. That's an easy one. And, um, but we're looking kind of, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm talking to Tina and they're behind, they're the table right behind Tina. I can kind of just look at, peek over at them and they're like looking and they're like, you know, they're talking amongst each other and they're looking and it's getting really close to like the end of time. Cause there's a little time ticker on the, yeah. on the video screen. And one of them gets up and goes to the bathroom <laughs> And then, like thirty seconds later, one of the, the one of the women on the team looks at her watch, 
and then writes an answer and they run it up. 100% they cheated, 100%. <laughs> There's no way they didn't, dude. That's that's insane. If she looks at her watch I, and then knows the answer immediately. I mean, exactly. On. That's the only, like, it, it just... <sighs> There's no way to prove it. I mean, there's a way to prove it. I'm not going to go over and say, let me see your watch. Let yeah. me see your phone. Let me see what you did. Right. But, uh, but they, took, they ended up taking third place, which means that if they are cheating, they're just not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and they can't use that tactic constantly, right? If someone's always getting up and going right, to the shitter. Right, if they shitter. always go to the bathroom. Exactly. So, And they missed they missed the next two write-in answers and stuff. So, you know, they they I think that this... this um, phones off and laptops shut or iPads shut or whatever uh, is is going to get to them but man it just it I look at those people and they they suck the fun out of something fun yeah you know what's the point of they, this otherwise there's no this is like gamers who use aim bots and shooters right it's exactly. cheating if you get caught you're banned forever but they can do them because you can get away with it a lot of times and I don't understand the point you dominate everybody for nothing. There's no point in it's just Exactly. I don't care. Exactly. And sure, yeah, there's there's gift cards on the line. There's money to be spent at the place, the the um the bar where we're at. You know, the, the top three winners get gift cards. So there is money on the line or there's cash uh, cards on the line. But that doesn't mean, well, you know, there's if there were no stakes, whatever. No, I mean, whatever. You know, you're you're taking the fun out of something that's supposed to be fun and 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 uh yeah uh, missing just, just, missing the point entirely these people i have no i have no tolerance yeah <laughs> for, for that. it just it just pisses me off yeah so, anyway it, cheater cheaters eater cheaters are eaters of of peters let's put of it that joy. way yeah. cheaters are eaters of peters yeah. i love it yeah. oh my gosh i want to use that as our team name next next yeah. week or cheaters, next are, eaters 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 of peters. cheaters are eaters of peters yep and that'll tell everyone else in the room to freaking cut it out and knock it off <laughs> Their freaking bathroom watch note. That's bullshit. I know. Exactly. It yeah. makes me mad hearing this. I wasn't even there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's play a game that no one ever cheats at. Game. Exactly. Yes. Uh, we need Dunaway in it, though. Oh, I'm in the wrong group. I almost called uh, the entirety of the, uh, of, of the, the film the, sack uh, team. Yeah. I hate when I do that. All right. Dunaway incoming. We'll also take one of you. I'll take our fourth caller today. Uh, you just send me a DM message uh hopefully you're you are number uh uh four let's see here who do we got they're, <laughs> they're coming in they're coming in here comes number <laughs> three who's gonna be fourth who's gonna be fourth all right we have a fourth i think let's see Sometimes I always I always worry that if this is someone who just happens to be messaging me right when we're doing the show. Right, exactly. They're just like, you know. <laughs> yeah, they may not actually want to be here, but we'll find out now as we do this. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the uh, the Wednesday edition of Tadpooly Feud. Yes, that's right. Time for us to play a game. Yeah. And we have on the line with us Brian Dunaway. Hi, Brian. How are you? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hey, man. Happy hump day. Yeah, it's a hump. Oh, it's a, you too, sir. It's a day for humping. It's a good day for everybody. Uh, it's good I'm to have you here. I'm trying to get my spirits up after after watching a documentary on ALF and all that stuff yesterday. I'm like, oh, that's a real bummer. You, oh. The actors hated it, and the kid who played Brian died, and I'm like, yeah. I got to share that with everybody to bum them out as well. I didn't well, know. They're them. eating the cats. They're eating the pet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about this at all. This is all news yeah, to me. Yeah. I didn't know this was, it was a, a documentary. Where is this? Where'd you see it? Oh, uh, it was a YouTube thing. It wasn't really a documentary. I, I, I use documentary loosely, L very loosely. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it awesome. Was a hot take on YouTube. How about that? I like it. Hot takes or YouTube takes for sure. Hey, look who else we have on the line right. with us. It's Guacmar. Welcome, Guacmar. It's been 364 days since I last talked to you guys. I know it's oh, been wow, a while. Really? Plus you Has it really like you know exactly like the last time you called in? Well, yeah, cuz last time I called in my wife was in the car accident, the the <gasps> oh. garbage can w was destroyed. Oh right. <laughs> That was a year ago. Jeez, that was a year ago. <laughs> That's insane. That really seems like a like a really strong A story and a really weak B story for your sitcom. <laughs> well, to be fair, tomorrow is also my birthday, so this week is usually the days I can call in. Oh, gotcha. well, happy happy freaking birthday, <laughs> man! It's nice to have you here. Uh, we're gonna play a game, as you know. Brian's gonna explain the rules, and we'll see if we can have you walk away a winner. 
That's right. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics, and Scott and Brian are going to have to predict the answers that they gave us. It is their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Guacamar, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian. And if your team wins, you'll get a prize package that includes, I think, Real Politics and Conglomerate 451. Now, these... Um, they sound familiar, and I don't know if I've already tried to give them away, and the person said, oh, yeah, I can't use them, or, or I already have them, or something like that. Or I may not have just marked them as given in the uh, in the list. So if you try them out and they do, well, if you win, first of all, you got to win. Yeah. But if you try those codes out and they don't work, let me know, and I'll give you new codes. Yeah. To new well, games. How about I make it easier, and since tomorrow's my birthday, if I win, give them out to somebody else. Oh, all right. We'll okay. do a little, uh, p- uh, p- uh, what do you call that? Pos- off, not posthumous. That's not the right word. It's- Pro- proxy proxy is the one I'm I know right at. A go. that's very generous B that doesn't really solve the problem because now I've no. got to work with somebody else on, on <laughs> whether C, or not those codes work <laughs> and C happy birthday yeah happy Tomorrow. birthday <laughs> thank you yeah well we'll figure it out we'll do it in post uh, alright well, let's do we'll this do then. Live. How that? I'm excited do it live all right, cool uh, alright let's get to this one this is a uh, this is going to be a fun one uh, uh, we asked 527 tadpoolers Put your hands on your buzzers and give me your answer to this. Name a fictional duck. Scott. A uh, Daffy Duck. Show oh, me you went with Daffy, Daffy Duck. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Daffy he fan. Go with Daffy. Mm. It's probably a mistake. Mm. Suffering mm. Uh Two answers will beat it, Brian. Uh, name oh, a fictional duck. Oh, my heart wants to say one, but my brain says that it's going to be Donald Duck. Mm. All right. Show me Donald Duck. Damn it. Oh. Number two answer on the board, which means, Guac-mar. Brian, you do have, you do have Guacamar and you do have uh, control you. of the board. Yeah. All the ducks for me. Yeah. Right. All the ducks. Let's put them my, all in a row. Now, <laughs> Guacamar, my heart was saying Howard. That's what I, I was did, thinking. I was too. afraid. I got chickened out, but that one spot's still up there. <laughs> I think you guys. I'd I think say Howard. Yeah, I'd go Howard. <laughs> I want Guacamar to win, so I'd say Howard. All right. Show me the the star of that song that uh, Leah Thompson and her friends sang in that movie of the same name, Howard the Duck. Yeah. Oh, that, you beautiful one answer on the board. Yeah. Almost double, by the way, Donald. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. When are we getting yeah. our new movie? Isn't that supposed to be still in, in production? We were supposed to get a, a Hulu series, but when oh, right. the Modoc series didn't work out, they pulled the plug on Don't. Squirrel Girl and uh, Howard the Duck. Modoc? Boo. Right. Well, the Modoc series wasn't very good. Is the problem? It could have been way yeah. better. I loved, you know, the 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 design, the style of it was great. The uh, humor in it was. And they came back with Hit Monkey, so that worked because people liked oh, it. Oh, Hit, Hit Monkey! So good. Got a new Hit season Monkey is too? fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I maintain yeah. that if Modoc would have been good, it would have it would have stayed, even if it wasn't great ratings. I think they just had a bad series mm-hmm. there. Um, sure. All right, you guys are on a roll and are also right. tied yeah, right yeah. now. So you know, yeah. no so problem. seven answers on the board. Why don't we go with uh, Donald's paramour, Daisy? Ooh, Ooh Daisy Duck. Mm. His better half. She's also not wearing pants. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bottomless Daisy. All right. Is that what you're going with? That's up to Guacmar. Guacmar yeah. says it's Daisy. We're going Daisy. Let's go with that. Show me Daisy Duck. Oh, look Number at that. A Daisy, if we do. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Big question is, is how many Disney ducks are on here? Oh, yeah. We got Scrooge. He's a oh, real yeah, Scrooge McDuck. Why don't you get Scott Scott all the answers to, <laughs> to oh, use sorry, once, sorry. You a, once you get a strike? Well, that that one was on my yeah. uh, my list. So I'm I sure should, it's in everybody's short list. Yeah, yeah. I got to right. I got to figure Scrooge McDuck's on here. So let's put him in there. So let's take yeah. it from Scott. Yeah. That's uh, Scrooge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Screw him. Scrooge McDuck. Screw you. Let's McDuck. go with David Tennant. Scrooge. Yeah. All right, show me Scrooge McDuck. Oh, thank God. Uh, number five. I did that one. All right. Yeah, of course you guys. So that one. the next question is, are all the nephews together as one? <laughs> Do they even care about the nephews? What if, what if we went with Aflac or something like that? Oh, what the Aflac about? duck. I like that. Aflac. Aflac. That's not a bad choice. Yeah. But it's Huey, Louie, and Dewey, by the way. Scott, you're welcome. The nephews. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way they're which on one will you? Which one will you choose? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm, I think Wachmar's on to something. I think Brian would probably combine the nephews, but I don't know. I don't know yeah, that for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll so I, well, I'll let you leave. I'll leave it to Wachmar. What do you let's want do to do? Let's, let's do Aflac. Yeah, let's do the Aflac duck. Okay. Okay. All right. Show me Aflac. 
Number seven. Ah, oh, yes. Man, you guys are crazy. Voiced by it. Gilbert Gottfried. Yep, Gil- Gil- Gilbert be. Gottfried. Used, used to, to be. do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Used to could. Actually, he got used kicked out of that before he died, right? They were he mad did, at him yeah. or something? Yeah. They didn't like some other joke he made or something. Like, yeah. there was some. I, I kind of want to go with the elevator go down the hole, plucky. <laughs> Plucky Duck, yes, from W Kids, WB Steven Spielberg's Tiny Tunes, right? Mm. Yes. Go oh, down the hole. I, I use right. that phrase all the time. Hate. <laughs> hate. Uh, let me tell you what I hate worse you than Muppet Babies. Tiny Tunes. Muppet. Boy, you should listen to us talk about that on the Play Retro Show. Scott has an opinion on Muppet Babies. Real strong one, too. Apologies different. to anyone who loves that stuff, but man, Muppet Muppet Babies can burn. I'm kind of with you on any of that stuff, yeah. 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 To help you out, Scott, just remember, the Muppet Babies were first puppets, or Muppets, before they were animated. Well, that's my point. Like you I should, think that's what makes them angry. That's what makes me angry. They're puppets. You don't <laughs> need to make a cartoon about puppets. Oh, I freaking hate it. Ugh. But I just told you at the start of the show how hard it is to work with puppets. Alf, it almost killed those poor people. Yeah. And well, look, cartoons yeah. are much easier. Yeah. yeah. Didn't W.C. Fields say never work with children, uh, animals, or puppets? Is that what he said? Right. Or aliens <laughs> named Alf. Right. <laughs> or a guy named W.C. Fields. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So you're going plucky, did you say? Is that what you said? Plucky. Yes. You're going plucky? All right. Show me plucky. 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 Oh, Number nine that. on there. Well done. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah man. Yes. Up in here. Yeah. That's uh, solidifies it, doesn't it? Is that it? Did I think do it, it does. Yeah. I think, he, I think you have uh, cemented the win because even if Scott gets the remaining 23, 22 points, right? With his uh, three, that only puts him at twenty-seven. So Gilbert got so Let's do, for 20, let's do uh, Hugh, Dewey, and Louis. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, yeah. You want to try? It? You want to try? It? Let's do it. Let's take, roll the dice. Take the risk. I will tell you right now that I need you to be more specific. Oh uh, shit! How about you could have been called Turbo? Turbo. Hmm. There's a uh, different I Turbo. I, I forgot Dewey. about. Yeah, yeah. Dewey. Hmm. Forgot about that. Ooh, Darkwing Duck too. Ooh. Oh, yeah, forgot, forgot about that those too. Yeah. Going mm-hmm. through the Disney animals right. in my head. I'm I'm changing my answer. Gizmo. Gizmo. <laughs> All right. Who's Gizmo? <laughs> There's a Gizmo, Gizmo Duck. Gizmo yeah, Duck? Gizmo Duck. Who is yeah, that from? Yeah. What's that from? DuckTales. DuckTales, yeah. Oh, I was never much of a... Ooh. I like I liked DuckTales. I just never really got Ooh. into it. So, sorry. All right. All right. Show me Gizmo. Uh, mm. Gizmo was on the list uh, tied for 15th place. Nice. Okay. Well, you guys said Darkwing, but you didn't go with it. I'm going to go with Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Seems Duck. Seems like a good choice. Show me Darkwing yeah. Smart. Number four See, answer on the board. Yep. We gave him the fewest points. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did actually. Yeah. Yeah. Suck so you could give Johnson. him anything. Sure. Right. <laughs> um. Uh, this is where we get into the weeds a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. trying to think of anything that's not Disney. That's a duck. Besides a few other things that's on the WB. But yeah, there's a lot of they got a lot of duck based duckery over there. Yeah, yeah. They got a whole <laughs> duck franchise going on. Um, a lot of Tom Duckery. Yeah, a lot of Tom Duckery. I like that. Um, all right. Um, it's a good duck. Uh, Who's a good duck? <laughs> <laughs> this won't be on there, but um, uh, you have to be more specific. Oh, I know. Uh, you know what? I'll just say Huey Duck. All right. Oh, there you go. Okay. Because you all said right. you had to be specific, so I'll just say Huey. Okay. All right. Show me Huey. Damn it! Oh. Number number twelve was Huey. I will say if there's Smart. there's a certain duck with a name that if it ends up on this list at all, even in the top one hundred, uh, it'll make me very happy today. But we'll wait till the end to, to say what it so, is. So, Brian, I just thought of one that's not Disney, but Disney tangentially. Okay, okay, okay give it to us. Disco. Disco. Duck. Ooh, disco duck. Disco, yes. Disco, disco duck. Ducky. I want to be a disco, disco duck. duck. That's not how that goes. Uh, that's not how it goes. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, Nailed it. We're actually, today is the anniversary, uh, 1976. On this date, on what? October 16th, Disco Duck was the number one song really? on the Billboard charts. Yes, nice which, timing. Jeez. Which, you know, says, what does it say about I our I wonder taste? if Donald will dance to that at one of his things. Um, <laughs> as political as I get. That's as, that's as political right. as you get? With his, little, All right. with his uh, ear floss, his brain floss yeah, yeah, dance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. Somebody Love has it. to make an animatronic one of those. I, that I would buy. I would have one of those. Wait, now, now all I can see is is 
him doing the floss, and that just weirds me oh. out. Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, you know where he puts puts that floss. Um, there's somebody did that once with a video version. They they superimposed it, so it looks like he's pulling yeah. floss through his head. It's pretty yes, good. Yeah. Yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. Comedy. All right, show me disco, disco duck. Oh, that too. Yeah. Shoot, we should have said Duck Dynasty. That's Those the, are all a bunch of fictional best, characters. Best duck sound I could come up with. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna do. Uh, <sighs> and you know everybody not... who thinks they do a good Donald Duck. Oh, they're always bad. I hate them all. <laughs> they're all bad. I don't. I've never met anybody except yeah, the original yeah. voice guy. And even even, even, even then, the original Donald Duck. Yeah, is even bad. even yeah. then, I don't like it. I've, I've just the yeah, Donald yeah, yeah. Duck thing is stupid. I hate it. It's uh, hard, and it's hard to say words. Like you can't say. You know, like trying to say words while you do it is so. You sounded like a transformer. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Roll out, <laughs> Optimus Duck. Optimus Duck. Now that would be a duck I could get behind. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. It's gonna be painful when it's not on here, but I'm just gonna say it. Is uh, Steve the Duck on here by sure. any chance? Oh, I used to sure. love that. Uh, that was uh, Jason Alexander. Oh, that was no, no. It no, was a right. it was a right? no. it was a cartoon that I drew for years. It's okay. You didn't <laughs> oh, know about that it. Thing. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, what am I There's thinking a cardboard of? Cardboard cutout of it somewhere behind you. Isn't yeah, there? right over there. No, he's over. Yep. Well, he is somewhere back here. He's out of frame. Yeah, he's yeah. on that wall. He's out of frame. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. All right, show me Steve the Duck. Oh, that is tied for wow. uh, tied Bands. for eleventh place. So I had to make it our eleventh uh, our eleventh place answer. You still get another guess. All right, that pleases me actually. That <laughs> oh, congratulations, you have pleased Scott. That's how Talia found me. <laughs> you uh, have Talia, pleased me greatly. Talia says she found experience points was the comic that Steve first appeared in. That's how oh. she found me. That's nice. Oh, that's nice. really cool. Yeah. Wow, thanks, Talia. Mm-hmm. That's nice to know. Um, all right, two answers left on the board. Number eight, number ten. You can't win, but you can at least, uh, uh, you know, Dewey say face. <laughs> sure, he said good. Dewey. Why not? <laughs> right, sure. Say Dewey one time. <laughs> All right, show me Dewey. Oh, uh, Dewey <laughs> uh, was tied for fifteenth place All along right, with everything else that only had one answer. One All right, one so no Huey, what, Dewey, yeah. or about- Louie. Probably we'll have to see. Whenever. Whenever Scott said that earlier, though, I thought he was talking about Duckman. I don't remember what his character's real name was. Remember Jason Alexander Duck playing Man. that? That's yeah. Duckman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Duck Duck Man. I was thinking Duckman, Count Duckula. Oh, yeah, Count Duckula. That's a good one, too. Everybody loves Count Duckula. Is that another? That's a Disney one? Duckula? Yes, Disney uh, one. Yeah. Count yes. Duckula is not Disney. Isn't it? No, it's not. Because it was, it, uh, it was Looney Tunes, no, you're right. right? It was Daffy, right? right? That's oh, right. No, well, Cap- yeah, uh, but in that case, you could do Duck. It was Warner Brothers. Who, what, what, was was it, what, was the, what was the space name that he had that Daffy Duck did with the little Duck Martian? Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. Duck Dodgers. Duck Grove Hall Productions. Mm. <laughs> I like Duck Dodgers a look lot. At you. Look at you and your knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm monitoring NORAD. <laughs> oh, <yeah. God. laughs> yeah hey put that, hey, put that iPad away that's def, a nice callback defcon yeah. 2 all right you going so with that i say, I say no i say we do louis because it's uh there you go let's do louis to be yeah. specific okay. yeah there you go you got the specificity specificity all right. okay all right show me louis uh, yeah, oh. two people. Two people said Huey. One person said Louie. So doing the math, zero people said uh, Dewey. <laughs> Louie. Yeah. Huey got, Huey got two. Louie's not. Dewey the, got one. Yeah. Louie did not even make the list. Oh, poor Louie. Louie. Louie's not much of a you know whatever. No, Louie nobody sucks. remembers Louie. No. It's like with Simon and Theodore. Louie. Louie blows. Um, okay, that means I have one chance here to just. Say you have one good. chance to get some to save some. Uh, <laughs> um, how about I didn't lure them at all, Amy? They asked, uh, Scott said, uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and I said, I need you to be more specific. I didn't say, uh, they're not on there. Mm, it's true. <laughs> no, that's a, t- I think you, yeah. I think that was fair and square. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. There's got to be at least one more duck of note. There's at least two. Uh, 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 I'm gonna try the Duck Dodgers. Duck Dodgers in the 25th century. That's that guy. That's, I know it's yeah, Daffy, but that, you know, 24th and a half century. Or 24th. Sorry. Yeah. Do that one. Yeah. All right. Show me Duck Dodgers. Dodgers. Ooh, Number nice. 10 on the list. Yeah, nice. Very good. nice. A little late, but nice. Um. All right. Nice. Yes. One answer left on the board. Holy crap! This is uh. 
that's a tough one right here. How is about down to the down to the wire? I mean, he's already won. So is there a mighty also, is there a mighty duck? How about the mighty ducks? Yeah, oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's a good one. The mighty mighty ducks. Let's, yeah, let's do a mighty that? duck. A duck of mighty nature. Mighty duck. Okay. All right. Show me a mighty duck. Ah. Uh, uh, so there was on the list, somebody said uh, Mallory from the Mighty Ducks animated series, <laughs> which is wow. great. I didn't know yeah, there was the a... The series is great. Yeah, the animated series. I didn't know there was an animated series. Were they ducks in the animated series? Yes, yes they, were. they were. And they were fighting okay. against uh, dinosaurs. Really? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, alien dinosaurs. Right. And Mallory, yeah. it's, it's what a great... Uh, although it should be... I mean, it's Fun. a woman's name, but... A mallard is a male duck, so it's like it's a tough one to uh, yeah. <laughs> to deliver it. <laughs> to deliver it. Hey, let's yeah. look at what this last one Looking is, shall we? Number, yeah. show me number the eight. Uh, Launchpad oh, launch McQuack. Pad. Oh, he's that was the other one I was thinking. From also from Who, uh, people like him. He's such a he's such a square. Launchpad McDuck. Wait, what? What's yeah, it? Launchpad yeah. McQuack. There's never a oh, crash he's ever walked away from. I've That's never. Right. I don't even know who that is. You, you remember it's, it? You just don't remember it. You remember it. No. You, you watch Tailspin. You watch Tailspin. Did I never watched Tailspin. I didn't but, watch uh, it. No, he wasn't on Tailspin. Was wasn't on Tailspin? Wait a minute. No. Tailspin is blue. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh. I'm getting it confused. Oh. I don't uh, know. Launchpad, who... Launchpad was uh, Scrooge's personal uh, That's uh, pilot. Right. Oh, 90s kids. And then he became Darkwing. I got him confused, uh, though. Yeah. Uh, 90s kids, Brian. 90s kids. That's what this is. I know. Yeah, I never watched any of that. Hey, let's look at what else is on the Most recent DuckTales, too. Yeah. <laughs> let's look at what else is on the list here uh duck detective from gravity falls uh what duck from disc world a couple people said that i'm sure that makes amy happy alvin i don't know if there's an alvin, alvin the duck or somebody was just thinking it was a chipmunk yeah uh, darling duck doug uh duck from don't hug me i'm scared the duck from okay. weird al yankovic's i want a new duck <laughs> eric duckman uh eric Gizmo duckman duck that's duckman right uh, oh, it must be right. Yeah, yeah, Eric that's what his name is. Um, that's, that's like <laughs> Batman is Bruce Batman. <laughs> Bruce Batman. <laughs> Bruce Batman. Mm. Uh, Harold, uh, Jebediah Lansford, Long Duck Dong, oh, uh, yeah. Med that's Mendoza. Funny. He was a goose. Yep. Mighty Ducks, Nightwing, uh, Oregon Duck, Psyduck. Finally got somebody bringing that one up. Mm. Uh, Ernie's Rubber Ducky. Sonia from Peter and the Wolf, the Toilet Duck, which I think is a product you can buy from Ronco that cleans your toilet, if oh. I remember correctly. Wow, I don't remember that. I, remember that. Yeah. I think and, it's actually just a toilet cleaner. Is it? Oh, it's like a, like a liquid you just put yeah, in because, there? Yeah, because the neck of the bottle looks like a duck's head. Oh, okay. Interesting. Nice. Okay. What is our obsession with ducks in this country? Good we Lord. love them, dude. We're into no them. Kidding. We, well, want... we have to put them all in a row. Yeah, yeah. get them in a row. Uh, Put your ducks in a row. Exactly. Put them on my shirt. Like, like water off their back. And yeah. finally, Wade Duck from Garfield and Friends. Oh, I for, no, yes. That's yes. from U.S. Acres. That's U.S. Acres side. Yeah. Wow. Look what we've done. Yeah. Look what we've done here. This is insane. Yeah, yeah. Here's the good news. You've won. Now, what you do with those codes is a is a whole other issue. Uh, yeah, you want me to want me to give them? Uh, I can give them away. Uh, give them away. Yeah. All right. I'm happy. Give it I'm away. I'm happy just talking to you guys. Yeah. Oh, well, it's good to have you, man. I'm all sorry. Right. I'm sorry it's been so long, but uh, you know, a year is a year, and uh, we've all had a, a a year. We've had a year. I almost said good year, but eh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. It's been a year. Okay. But you know what? Now it's a year is behind you. That bad year is behind you, and now you've got a great year to look forward to with your with your birthday coming up. So yeah. that's good. I agree. Uh, well, thanks for playing. You get one of these no matter what. Congratulations. And uh, it's been a treat having you here. Stay out of trouble and be good. Brian Dunaway, listen to this. We are normally recording uh, Play Retro on Fridays, almost always. Mm -hmm. But the last few weeks, we have had stuff. And this it's week, bad. you've got a birthday you have to attend. So we are flopping it Correct. a little bit to Sunday, right after we film or uh, do Film Sack uh, with the boys. You and I will do a live Play Retro. We're talking about Postal. 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 Mm. Yeah. You know what I found out about Postal? What'd you find I out? I thought 1997, eh, we were just overreacting. Those games weren't too violent and, you know, dark. I've been playing it this week. I'm going to tell you, that's some dark stuff. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, Suicides, uh, executing people, execution style. It is crazy. Yeah, it is. It's, it's Executing people execution style, you say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's controversial. It's, to... <laughs> it's controversial for a reason. I mean, that game was was a big whoop at the time, and people were all upset about it. Uh, let's find out if any of that holds up, you know? So we'll do that on Sunday. Uh, check us out. Brian Dunaway, Kiss 
our Ooh. butts. Ew. All right. All right, so I'm going to do really quickly give this away. Uh, the first person to tell me, and then we're going to start the song right after I give this question, and then I'll, I'll uh, reach out to the person who gets this right. But uh, if you want to win these prizes, or if these codes don't work, I'll give you something else. Um, I want the first person in chat to tell me the name of Howard the Duck's hot redheaded girlfriend. And the first person to type that into chat gets the prizes. Actor or the uh, character? The character. Okay. Uh, Howard the, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's get to the song. This one comes in from Lucy. Uh, Lucy says, Dax Riggs is a gift to the people. I can't find this new album anywhere officially, but it should be releasing soon. Um, October 11th. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, the album actually comes out. This, the album is called Seven Songs for Spiders, and it comes out next year, early early next year. Um, but uh, uh, this is the first single from the album, and um, this is going to be... Uh, so it's called... Uh, Deceiver. This is really cool. Some heavy, heavy stuff here. Uh, Deceiver by Dex Riggs. Computers are supposed to make life easier. About one in three American households has bought that theory and purchased a PC. But what they didn't tell you is that life does not get easier right away. For many newcomers, PC stands for pain and confusion. What's the poop? And we've returned. Brian, I need to know who that music was by and from. Oh, for sure. That's by Dax Riggs, which is a pretty damn cool. It's like a video game character name, right? That is the oh, star yeah. of your video game, Dax Riggs. Yep. Uh, that is from the upcoming album, Seven Songs for Spiders, and that is a song called Deceiver. Excellent. Uh, and well done. We have a winner in the chat. Who won that thing? We do. Uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob Crouch uh, won that one. So, Jacob, if you are in Discord... Send me a message. I'm at Coverville, as you might guess, and uh, I will get you these codes. And if these codes don't work, then I will get you uh, some new codes. Excellent. We'll just keep playing. We'll keep playing the code game until we get some codes. That's that work right. For you. Welcome to Code Games. We want Tom. Hey, we do want Tom. And the good news is this: Tom wants us. At least I think he does. And he's here now to talk to us because he wants us. Tom Merritt, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, I don't hear Tom Merritt. Can't hear Tom. His rings of greenage are green, though. So yeah, we have green ringage. Green. He's emanating speakage. noise of some sort. It's just hello. Like, oh, oh, hello. Oh, now go. we hear you just fine. Is it? Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> now we can hear you. We can hear you. I I, I worry uh, as I know I you're don't not. Know on... why you can't see me. Oh, are I you? Cannot see you. Are you in your office today? See me. I thought maybe it's because you were you were somewhere. Me. Like a... <laughs> no, I'm 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 in my office. Um. Hmm. Oh, that would be why. Yeah. Okay. It's just well, a thing. There we, yeah. that, that's why, because I'm in my office. Yeah. There. <laughs> I had just heard that Rob was on today, so I thought, oh, maybe Tom's away or like on a phone. No, or, I'm around. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here. Can you see me now? No. Cannot nope. see you at all. Can you see me now? Yes, I can see you now. And can they see you? Yes, they can. Everybody can see you now. Everybody can see me. Oh, oh. thanks, everybody. I'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah, you got a haircut. I like that. I feel like I need a I need a nice tight. Oh, thanks. You know, yeah. Every time out. I go see my barber, he's like, "Oh, it took uh, you. It took a while to get back." Huh? <laughs> it's taken, wow, that is yeah. like the most uh, backhanded. It's not even a compliment. It's just like the subtle dig of uh, yeah. uh, hair hair not growing as fast as it used to, huh? Mm. I know, I know yeah. this well, well, or it's or it's like, man, your hair's out of control. You, you should have come in earlier. Sure. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That okay. can be his an, that yeah. can be his excuse if if uh, Tom took it wrong and got mad. See, that's how. It works. I mean, right, it's in his right. interest for me to come more often. I get that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's how they survive these barbers. Uh, well, anyway, it's good to have you here, of course. And uh, we always like having you on on a Wednesday, talking about the tech news of the day before the daily tech news show happens later. Uh, Tom, what is going on today that we might find interest in? New Kindles. <gasps> we just Ooh, we yes, mentioned this very uh, briefly yeah. at the top of the show, but we didn't get into it. I'm excited to talk yeah. to somebody who knows what the hell's going on because, from what I can tell, they seem like e ink with color, and that yep. feel, that feels like a big whoop to me. But really? You, yeah. Oh, you don't like that? No, I think uh, I no, I think it sounds good because no, it is a it is an actual big whoop. Yeah, like, like a big actual, whoop. Oh, like, oh, oh. 
<laughs> I see. Sorry, I, I took that as ironic. I'm like, no. oh, big whoop. No, yeah. I always say big whoop like it is actually a big whoop. Yeah. But it, but I like I the idea. Yeah, yeah. Like some of my comics might look good on there. Uh, yeah, other oh, content yeah. like that. Like I don't want a tablet so much for reading. So I switched to a tablet for like reading comics or something. But if I could do it all in one place where my comics already are, I mean, that sounds all right. Yeah, this is Amazon took a long time to get to this. Uh, Kobo has had a color e-ink screen for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of other third party manufacturers that you could buy on Amazon, ironically, that have color e-ink screens. Uh, and for anybody who doesn't follow this super closely, e-ink is a different technology than what you see in your phone or your iPads or, or anything, uh, because it's it's to oversimplify uh, just little little plastic balls uh and with the monochrome displays like kindle has had uh there's just a white side and a black side and you you flip the little plastic ball uh one way or the other to make the screen dark or light and then create images on it uh color requires you to have multiple little colored balls in there uh so that you can you can do red green yellow you know and and then mix them up and cause purple and orange and all the other colors it's a little more difficult to do. Uh, it also is a little more difficult to make good looking uh, with a, an LED screen or an OLED screen like you have on a on a tablet. Uh, you've got a backlight. You've got a rich color tablet. These are these are technologies used in televisions. They are more power hungry though. Mm. Uh, with an e ink screen, you don't have that rich like emanating light that comes out like you have in OLED. So you have to do other things to make them look good. And I think that's probably why Amazon dragged its heels on this. Uh, I think the reason this is probably most exciting for people who wanted a color e-ink screen uh, is that it's got uh, eight weeks of battery life. Jeez. <laughs> so uh, you can have wow. color, but not have to charge it every day. Um, and I guess the other thing is a lot of people are in the Kindle universe. Yeah. And so if you buy a Kobo, you it's not easy to read your Kindle books on Kobo. You can do it if you really want to work at it, uh, but it's 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 not something built in. Whereas if you buy the Kindle Color Soft, which is the new e-ink, uh, color e ink screen from Kindle. You're in you're in the universe, and a lot of people have all their ebooks in the Kindle universe. It's also a pretty good price for its com competition. Competition in this space is a little more expensive. This is two seventy nine. I'm seeing competitors anywhere between like three fifty and eight hundred uh, for this technology. I, yeah. You can find them cheaper too, but they're also cheaper builds. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. This is this is a this is a well priced e ink. You you're going to be able to find cheaper monochrome e inks. In fact, the the new Kindle Paperwhite is only 160 bucks. Uh, but if you want the color, 280 is not a crazy amount uh, to pay, especially compared to the comp competition. Uh, you should realize that you're going to lose some re resolution. Monochrome will get you 300 PPI, uh, resolution that's pixels per inch. Uh, whereas if you're doing color image illustrations, it'll be 150 PPI. And I think they did that on purpose because they want to be able to show you nice, sharp letters when you're just reading black text on a white page, which you will still be doing a lot of the time. Mm. The color is for the book covers, like you say, for comics, because Comixology was folded into Kindle, mm. uh, and, and any illustrations and things like that that come along. Uh, is it... Uh, stylus included or no? no it's not a stylus type yeah. device or there's it? no stylus on this one interesting that you mentioned that there's also a new kindle scribe mm -hmm. which is meant for note taking and they include a stylus the premium pen uh which is upgraded from the previous stylus uh to have a soft tipped end to feel more like an eraser Oh, um, so the scribe added some texture to the screen to make it feel more like paper when you're when you're taking notes on it, and then that soft tip eraser to make it more feel like an eraser when you're erasing. Uh, that one's a little pricier though, four hundred bucks for the Kindle scribe, yeah. and not ship until December fourth. So oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're buying it as a as a holiday present, uh, you're cutting it close. If the um, these always interest me with the pens if they are good. If the latency is good, like I get a really, I get great performance on my iPad, but I love the feel of paper and I love the idea of a thinner thing I could take around for notes and reading's great on these. Obviously they're designed to do that, but, um, any improvements they make to those, I'm, I'm sort of always watching that interested. And then the reviews will come out and say, not as peppy as we'd hoped. And I'm like, okay, I'll wait for the next iteration and see how it goes. Uh, well, anyway, a bunch of new stuff. Kindle still a still a threat. Sounds like still a thing. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Fun. Yeah. yeah, I've been using and, uh, my uh, phone mostly for reading these days, and I don't know why I do that, but I don't know. Maybe I'll switch. I, I, I have always done that since the first Kindle. I never got a second 
Kindle, I don't think. I bought the first Kindle, loved it. Uh, and then Amazon brought the Kindle app to my phone. And I just said, well, I already have my phone. It's just <laughs> always in your pocket. Some people that yeah. drives them crazy. It tires out their eyes. And I totally understand that. But for me, it's been fine. So I, I just, I end up doing audiobooks more often than anything. But if I'm reading an ebook, I'm generally just reading it on my phone because I've got it with me. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's how I'm reading my. It's like, you know, yeah. the best camera you have is the camera you have with you, mm -hmm. sort of. Oh, situation. good point. Uh, well, awesome. Tom Merritt, this has been fantastic. And as always, the Daily Tech News Show happens uh, on the daily and today at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. You're going to want to check that out. It's going to be me, Sarah, and Rob today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Rob's traveling uh, for uh, one of his daughter's school. Uh, I think it's a homecoming event. Um, mm. So uh, we swapped. So I'll be on on Thursday this week, which I'm usually not. Rob's usually on on Thursday. Oh, that's awesome. Rob's great. I can't wait. to. I don't ever get to be on when, when Rob's on, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. So. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun. Is there anything else going on? We're, we're probably getting toward the toward the tail end of your book. Uh, uh, campaign, right? Or where are we on that? Yeah, I actually just heard from uh, from the editors uh, this morning. I need to email them back in case they're listening. I saw the email. I'll get back to you. Uh, so yeah, we're we're in the editing phase. Uh, and uh, thanks to everybody who has ordered it. Uh, we're not quite finally over the line yet, but everybody is acting as if we'll get there. So I guess we're not worried, uh, but I'm a little worried. So if you haven't bought Synced yet, go to tomsnewbook.com and buy it right now. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes. Uh, I'm sure I shouldn't worry. <laughs> no, you shouldn't worry at all. It's Tom Merritt, everybody. You know him, you love him. And Tom, we'll see you later. Have a great day off and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Thanks, man. Not really a day off. He's still, you know. Yeah, there's no there's no day off for, for Tom. Not for Tom, Tom Merritt. Time off. No. no, his name is Merritt. Come on. Right. You think that's an Most accident? Yeah, you think that you think I'm I, you think I'm a Johnson for by accident? If you know what I mean, Brian. If you know what I mean, a Johnson. Uh, 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 I see what you I see what you're doing there. I yep. see what you're doing. Yep. Oh, quick update. So yesterday, uh, before we call the uh, the recommendals, folks, um, we did this. I put up this thing in the show, um, a fake rap album uh, with Phoebe oh, on the front. Yeah, yeah the uh, right, the Phoebe album. Yes. I wanted to share. So I shared Brian's suggestions. I put a few in there myself. Here are the top picks according to my children. Okay, we had, all, oh, we had a whole okay. vote. Uh, they really liked uh, Kid Cutie. That was one of mine. Uh, yeah. Nice Cube was highly rated. Fun DMC did all right. <laughs> uh, Smalley Biggs ended up getting a lot of votes. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Uh, you did Suge Cereal, I think. Uh, that uh -huh. also rated well, rated in the top six. Let's see, Notorious T.O.T. is in there. <laughs> Good. Yep. Five, five Cent. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, here's a new one. Dick, Nick did Poutcast, like Outcast, but Poutcast. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, Poutcast. Yeah, good. Um, her album should be called the That Hug Life without the T, so no thug, but hug. Uh, uh -huh. And then finally, oh, Machine Gun Smelly was a, was a, went a pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> and Fetty Nap, Fetty Nap, Nap was a high rated one. So anyway, Fetty Nap, that's really good. So wow. now I'm now I'm like tempted to like print like a full size album cover. And Nobody did uh, Peanut M and M's. No, but we did do M and M's spelled just like the candy. Just like the candy. Yeah, yeah. they thought that was pretty good. Uh, anyway, fun fun back and forth had yesterday on that. Uh, all right, let us get in the the Nicole. Yeah, Randy's tied up. He's got work stuff. He's really, he's literally tied up. They they have, have tied him up. That's right. I'm in the middle of yeah. reading that book, that Blizzard book, and uh, oh boy, I got stuff to say about that. Really? Oh wow. Okay. I'm, I'm referenced in there. It scared the hell out of me because I'm in a I'm in a footnote, and I went, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> turns <laughs> out it was footnote. turned out it was totally innocuous. But if you find my name while you're going through the book and you wonder if I did something stupid, I promise I didn't. All right, here comes this. What's this now? This right here is this. Well, what do you recommend? All right, that music tells us that it's time to welcome Nicole Spagnolo to the show. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome, Morty yeah. <laughs> here. I thought I'd do that for you. That was good. <laughs> Good morning, morning stream. Yeah, that oh, was that's really really good. good morning. I woke, that's woke, all right. Woke, no, woke. if you got it right, we'd be a little surprised. Yeah, a little yeah. I, I prefer the wrong way. That was really nice. Uh, it is Nicole, and it is recommendals. We take things we've seen from streaming services, and we recommend them for folks at home. Uh, these are usually on the more common services, so you don't have to go hunting too far for these. And we start each week with Brian, who's got a clip here all lined up. Brian, what do we got? 
I've got a thing. Yeah, this is uh, a movie that um, came out a couple of years ago, but I'm rewatching it for a particular reason. It'll be an obvious particular reason. Ooh, I like particular reasons, obvious or not. For some reason, your yeah. file didn't move over. Oop. I know oh, why. No. I'll fix it. Hold on one second, everybody. Pretend, okay. pretend we did this pre-show and that I was looking for a movie. Yourself. Yeah, I was yeah. looking for a movie that wouldn't wake Teen up, so I wanted something with a lot of whispering in it. Oh, good. So it's the Quiet Place. Brian recommending <laughs> right. the Quiet Place. Okay, there it is. It worked this time. Let's play it. He waited for him at the gym. Pete always liked to work out late at night when no one else was around. There's a needle mark on his neck. Injected him with arsenic. Rat poison. Yeah. That seems to be his theme here. Look at this thing. It's a maze. What kind of demented son of a bitch does this to a person? More symbols. It's another cipher. He blasted these out after his message went viral. The bastard murders you and your reputation. That guy pushes drops. On the east end. I'll get him. Why would Pete get involved in something like this? Looks like he got greedy. You kidding me? After everything we did to take down the Maronis? He busted the entire operation, then he caved to some little life dealer. Maybe he's not who you thought. Why did you say that name? Uh. <laughs> More whispering than a Billie Eilish album. Yep. That is uh, the Batman. Mm. Uh, a few people in the, uh, the the chat room recognized it. Yeah, um, that's Robert Pattinson and Jeffrey Wright as your Batman and your uh, Commissioner Gordon. Fantastic role. And this is this feels like it's as much a Commissioner uh, Gordon film as it does uh, a Batman film. And it feels like it's a, it's a detective Batman film, which is really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's a good, um, uh, you know, good, good going back to Batman's roots as a, um, uh, as a, as a detective in detective comics, of course, right there. How does, how does this link to the penguin movie that I saw on Max? directly it, it links it is it is an absolute uh the well, thing you watch it, before you start watching the penguin the penguin yeah. is a series series, it's a sequel a series. okay so it's all because yeah. there's so many levels of batman now that I'm there like, are yes with, where, with joker what with and what yeah and... well this is oh yeah the joker now which right so this is a thing that will uh this is its own little universe um, and this is a universe that will be maintained separately from the DCEU. So Matt Reeves, who directed this, has a trilogy planned out and um, potentially even some more series spinoffs um, with Robert Pattinson as Batman or the Batman. Um, so this will continue even though James Gunn's got the, you know, the DCEU stuff going on separately from this. Yeah. Um, Makes me happy, by Part the way, because I love this movie. I, so me much. too. This yeah. movie, I liked it, and and I'd forgotten how much I liked it until I watched it again. And uh, just just hearing the Nirvana song, something in the way, um, in my head, it gives you know makes the the goosebumps on my arms rise up because that's such a great. It's such the perfect mood mm -hmm. for this film, and you hear it a couple times in here. Um, this one had uh, Paul Dano as the Riddler, and and easily the most terrifying version we've ever had of the riddler um yeah, he was a character he was born to be that weirdo just absolutely know, he jim really was. was pretty uh oh my gosh jim carrey was <laughs> oh, terrible oh my god like terrible. like of all the people <laughs> i mean i like jim carrey don't get me wrong but but uh uh, you've also got Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Uh, you've got uh, John Turturro as uh, Maroni, uh, head of the no, not Maroni, um, uh, Falcone, right? Falcone. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, and Peter Sarsgaard's and Sarsgaard's in this. You've got Andy Sarsgaard. Circus as Alfred. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, really Great good Alfred. Alfred. And then yeah. 
and then an un, unrecognizable, as you mentioned, Colin Farrell as the Penguin, um, who's continuing, obviously, to play that role in the TV show spinoff, the, the series, I shouldn't call it a TV show, the series uh, spinoff on Max. And, you're, and this was so, your goal, right? To watch this, get be reminded yes. of everything, and then go straight into yes. Penguin. Yeah. And boy, do I recommend it, because the Penguin picks up right where this leaves off. Like, um, you know, this movie ends with a very... Uh, Gotham in a very bad state and Penguin is not a prequel this one picks right up and mentions Batman I've not I've only um, halfway through the first episode of Penguin but there's no no sightings of Batman yet and of course I don't know if Pattinson signed on to make any cameos in the TV show but um, highest rated uh, streaming show currently on uh, any service right now that thing is, is it really it. I yeah. can see why it is really good and my gosh I'm probably going to be recommending that before too long but you got Clancy Brown in that thing uh there, there's a whole bunch of great actors in that uh, uh with his crabby uh, patties <laughs> exactly <laughs> the, the how i met your mother mother uh melody christina melody Kristen melody i always love how it's about 50 percent of people go crabby or you know yes. mr crabs and 50 percent of people go the kurgan and then a few right, other, uh, right. a couple extras go, wasn't he in Lost for like three episodes? And- <laughs> he, was, he, was he was in Lost for a hot minute. Yeah. yeah I love him. In, remember Carnival? Was, yeah, was Carnival good was good in that. Yeah. He was great in, uh, obviously, Shawshank Redemption, a defining role yeah. for him. He's yeah. amazing. There's no, He'll there's always no... be Mr. Krabs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to that Nirvana song, you've also got Michael Giacchino uh, doing music for the Batman and does an incredible job. It is, as you heard, a little tiny bit of the strings in that one. But just the, like, this almost turns into a little bit of a of a buddy cop thing with um, with Jim Gordon and uh, and Batman. It's mm-hmm. really, really well It's what done. we've all been asking for years. We want the detective side of Batman to show up more, less cape and cowl, mm-hmm. more like weird mystery. And they, in my opinion, they nailed it. I think that the yeah. director, Matt Reeves, makes nothing but good movies. His two apes movies are incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, they're amazing. I'm a fan of Cloverfield. I know, I know, people have some issues with that, but I, I find Cloverfield in the way that it's, um, uh, that it's presented with the found footage style, probably one of the best, mm-hmm. my favorite of the found footage movies. Yeah, it's um, really good. And he's just, I don't sure. know, he's got a touch for this stuff and the dark oh, the dark nature of batman fits really well with his style and if you haven't seen war for the planet of the apes or dawn of the planet of the apes those two sequels to mm-hmm. the first one are oh. so freaking good they're really good oh yeah. anyway yep um, awesome. so this is actually streaming in a few places right now it looks like you can watch it either on max as to be expected which is where i watched it um but i think it's also on netflix um and maybe even on amazon prime according to google so um I think there's a, a few places I should look at just watch um, and tell you for sure. But uh, chances are, if you've got a streaming service, you can watch the Batman on it. Yeah, no, it's uh, for sure on uh, for sure on Max. I know for sure on Max. There we go, Max. Um, the Hulu bundle. Oh, looks like it is not currently on Amazon Prime or on Netflix. I don't know why it was telling me Netflix, but uh, it is not. So I think it was, and it just got pulled or something. But that yeah. might might be it. That one. Yeah. Will, that one will dance around and be on different services. I think. Yeah. Um, so. That's great. I need to rewatch that before. I, I kind of want to do the same thing. I want to rewatch it and then yeah. go into Penguin, which I haven't started Highly yet. Highly so. recommend it because A, this is a really good movie and deserves another watch. And B, like I said, it um, it picks up right where the movie leaves off. So it's a good, it, it's, it's you know, Penguin episode zero, really, if, mm. you're, if you're looking at the Penguin series. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. He also, I always forget that Matt Reeves directed that Let Me In. Now, a lot of people say, well, it's the Swedish, the Swedish original uh let the right one in let the right one in. yeah whichever oh, everybody right. says that's the better movie but i actually think this is pretty freaking good so if you'd like I if never... you'd like if you'd rather hear an english film and you want to see a young <laughs> you want to see a young chloe grace more tetsies and uh um... <laughs> <laughs> she gets an extra syllable every time you bring your name up that's it's right like sausage let's get yeah. that cody smith mcphee kid that was still a kid yeah. uh it was right yeah. after the road it's great his version of that is great, in my opinion. But anyway, it's cool. He's got uh, something upcoming called uh, "The Wrecking Crew," an uh, upcoming American buddy cop action comedy film with uh, Jason Momoa and Dave Bautista. Which bring it so on! It feels like it feels like. Um, uh, how can you have that much, that much testosterone in one, <laughs> in one buddy cop film? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Whew, that feels uh, his, like it might be too much. His production credits for upcoming are interesting. Oh. Something called Waystation. 
Wrecking Crew, like you mentioned. Uh, Dynamic yep. Duo, which sounds like a Batman sequel, if, I, if I'm not mm-hmm. incorrect. Uh, Mouse Guard, Untitled Cloverfield sequel, and God's Country. I mean, that guy's busy. He's got stuff. Wow. Wow. I didn't sh- realize he was also an executive producer on the thing I recommended a, a few weeks ago, the animated Batman Caped Crusader. Oh, uh, that's cool. That's on Amazon. Yeah. He might be a bit of a fan, it sounds like. He might be. He knows the he knows <laughs> the material. He's ready to do his work. And, yeah. Uh, I really like him. Yeah, uh, anyway, great recommendation. Uh, Check it out. Available now on Max. That's right. Nicole, what'd you bring oh. us? What do we got here? Well, I, it's that time of year where I'm doing birthday parties and Halloween and all that stuff. And I don't have a lot of time to watch. But I am watching this again. And I feel the need to make sure. Because I can't believe how many people I talk to say they've never watched a single episode. So shame, I, I shame don't on know them. how that's possible. Yeah, <laughs> but, shame, shame on them. It's an all-timer. It will be a classic forever. It's amazing, this thing we're going to talk it's, about. 15 seasons and I'm trying to remember when it first came out. I'm sure I recommended it. So it's been a very long time since I've probably recommended it. So I'm going to recommend it again because it's still going strong. And if you haven't given it a shot, I will tell you why you should after the clip. All right, here we go. Hi, everyone. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Teddy. <laughs> uh, just a taste, but uh, that is se- what season six, right? Or that so? was season six, mm. the, ha- the Halloween episode, uh, one of the Halloween episodes. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I, I sent it to you. There is a list yeah. of all the Halloween episodes. Mm. And this is what we do every year. We pull up the list and we put them on the TV because this is uh, all the seasons are streaming on Hulu. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can get them on my Plex without having to buy every single season. Mm-hmm. Can because you... they have yet to make a compilation of all of the seasons. Oh, uh, see, you that's what that's what I was going to ask. Buy them individually. That's what I was going to ask. I wondered if Hulu maybe lets you do playlists, but it sounds like they don't. That's a bummer. No, yeah. it's, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. But I love watching all of the Halloween episodes on Halloween. I love watching all the Thanksgiving episodes on Thanksgiving, and I love watching all the Christmas episodes on, at Christmas. Um, and we are going to do a trunk or treat and we're all dressing up as Bob's burger characters, uh, on Friday. So you might find some pictures. Oh, very cool. Yeah. We already got a tease of one of them, which is great. That's who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big shock. All right. So hold on a second. I see that your kids are both wearing the burger costume. Are they both Jean or what's the plan there? Well, if you watch the show, you know that they all take turns wearing this burger costume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So I made the burger costume. You can find it on my Instagram. It really, at first I thought, well, mate, I made it too big. But then I looked at the picture of Jean and it literally like, he's all burger in the, in the, in the, (laughs) so I'm like, oh, maybe I got it right. Yeah. But uh, I got Mateo is going to be Jean. And so he has like yellow shirt, blue shorts. It might be a little cold, so I might have to get him with some blue pants. Yeah. Uh, red shoes, and I got him a little keyboard that um, <laughs> with fart has noises. Animal- on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope keyboard. it farts. If it farts, you've done. You're a good mom. You've done all you can do. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, well, you can put in any sound you want. So I I told him just make a fart sound, and then you can do. That. Yeah, this is great. I'm. Uh, but yeah. oh, Jay Fungtastic says that Hulu actually has them all under the Hulu Ween tab. Oh, um, so that's a good way to uh, to keep it as well. Oh, I'm yeah. doing this. Dude. I just want them to keep rolling because they're yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. You want to watch those like binge them one right after the other because they're yeah. so good. That's great. Um, yeah, Bob's Burgers. Is so when good. I when I ask people why they haven't watched it, they're like, oh, I don't know. It's such a wholesome. Like the family just loves, they're just, they accept everyone and they're weird yeah. and they're, yeah. and that's, you know, that's kind of life, right? We're all a little weird and yeah. there's just, I don't know. I just love the show. Love, the show does this amazing job of capturing like, um, the quirkiness, the backwardsness, yeah. the strangeness, the town, all these things that are all sort of combined, uh, and the conflicts that arise and all that other stuff. Yeah. But there's there's like mm-hmm. a certain... The Simpsons does this pretty well, too. There's this certain kind of cohesion the family will always have. They will always be mm-hmm. together. I don't know. Simpsons a little bit more rough for me. Like, yeah. I don't get warm and fuzzies with the Simpsons. I get the warm and fuzzies with Bob's Burgers. Yeah. I, like, I want to it's a different live level, in I guess, that but, town. Yeah. 
I want to talk to Teddy. I want <laughs> you want your mail delivered by Teddy. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, does Teddy do mail? You want your mail delivered by uh, Mike. 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 Yeah. Mike. And that's played well, by the guy from SNL Tim, whose name is yeah. Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows. That's oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. It is Tim Meadows. Good call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you also have uh, Kevin Klein. Is it Kevin uh -huh. Klein? It is. He's, uh, Mr. Fish Odor. The rich fish odor. Yeah, yeah fish odor. Zach Alphanakis as his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so many race, opportunities for names. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> so the race 86 says there's too much singing. Um, oh. I, do, I do skip over those episodes. Do you really? I don't like it. Oh, I, I love don't. the musicals. I love them. I don't, oh my God, I, I, love I don't them. like yeah. it when they turn uh, the episode into a musical. Oh, I love those. A little bit of singing is fine. I don't, I don't enjoy it when they sing too much. Yeah. So I do skip over those episodes. I like those. There's an episode where, where it's her, or sorry, it's Louise and her dad, and they have to. I can't remember the conflict, but it's one of the sweetest episodes, and it's because that has that amazing song where they all like come together in it. I love that one. Yeah, <laughs> and I like how sometimes you get the song at the end again in the in the closing oh, credits too. I yeah. do, I do like the songs that they do in the closing credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those, those are, are good. those, especially if Linda's singing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, Linda's amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. just a wonderful, wonderful show. It's you know, like I said, fifteen seasons. I can't imagine them stopping the show anytime soon. No, um, they they don't have any kids doing any voices. It's all adults, so they can do it forever. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. No kids are changing their uh, <laughs> changing I, their. Mm -hmm. I do think it's, yeah. I do think it's interesting that I was watching Archer, and mm -hmm. it was because of Archer I started. I think watching Bob's Burgers because uh, Benjamin H. What the hell is his name? Oh, please, please uh, continue that. Go ahead and keep going with that one. Google yeah. it. Yeah. H Benjamin. H Benjamin. Get in there. Keep going. There. I don't know. You know who I'm talking about. The voice Benjamin of Benjamin H John. Yes. Uh, <laughs> H John Benjamin. Just for the record. H John Benjamin. Yeah. Just so you know it. <laughs> God, I knew it was. I was getting all the words, just not. You were. Name. You were exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I was expecting so John, anyway. or uh, I was expecting Ben Johnjamin. So you did pretty well. <laughs> ben John Jameson. Jameson. My my point was for the for the I don't know probably the first few seasons of Bob's Burgers I could not like take Archer out of the voice, oh, and yeah. then eventually yeah. at some point Archer went yeah. away and it it's Bob. Yeah, because so. he doesn't really like when he was coach whatever on uh, home movies. Um, that's the one I had to get out of my head because I watched tons of home movies. Uh, oh yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of connected sure. tissue with these animators too. That was like a whole. There's a whole history there, but. Um, when they, when I heard Bob's voice, I'm like, well, that just sounds like coach, whatever, but that's the thing with him, right? He's the same voice in everything he does. The, the can he was in that one hot wet summer or whatever that's called. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, the can or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. just Bob. There's, <laughs> like, there's certain, there's certain voice actors. It's like, they don't try and do it. Pat Oswalt, a great example, never tries to do a different voice. And it's like, fine, I'm fine with that. And I know, I know it's Pat Oswalt when I hear it. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just who they are. Yeah. So that's just who they are. I'm down with it. Uh, awesome. Check it out. Uh, well, that, that playlist is great. I didn't know that was a thing they even yeah. did. So that's awesome. So yeah, look at Halloween. I, I'm guessing. I really hope they do it for Thanksgiving too, and then the holiday. Oh, their their Christmas freaking Christmas. Thanksgiving episodes are so good. Yeah. The turkey in the toilet one. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> I love that one so much. That's an early it's one. It's just though. a wonderful show. Even if you don't like animation, it's. It's it's one of those shows where you can just put on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. yeah, just let it roll. It's good, it's a great background show. I might so. do some of that today. You've inspired me. Thank you for that. Uh, all right, let's jump to mine. This is a documentary. Let's get serious for a moment and talk about documentaries. This is, uh, excuse me. <laughs> this keeps us over on Max where we were. Pro oh, have we frozen? We've frozen. Okay, that's great. Hold on. Audio. I think he's about to play audio. I mean, it was perfect timing, as as it were. Um, well, anyway, so I'd watched a documentary. It was very. It's a serious one, but also not that serious. I don't know if you guys remember when I recommended here on Recommendals the documentary about QAnon. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. It was like yep, the yep, yep. who who is Q thing, and they were trying to figure out who it was. And they by the end of it, it's pretty Max, obvious, right? Yeah, it was on Max or it was HBO yeah. original. Yeah, and so this is another one of those by the same director. 
doing a lot of the same things, but in a very different way. I'll play the clip and then I'll talk about it. Here you go. Before you know it. Today, we're having a funeral for Bitcoin. Despite all the doomsday prophecies, just 15 years after launch, Bitcoin had become the 10th most valuable asset in the world, outperforming Wall Street by a massive margin. One of the biggest unanswered questions surrounding Bitcoin is who invented it? When you, when you ask about the creator, who created this? We have no idea. There's these things called nerds. All right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can't. Uh, Dick that's Webster's that's Dictionary that defines nerds. As... I don't like him at all. He's, he drives me crazy. Bill Maher. Oh. Bill Maher annoys me. But they, they have a couple of quotes from him. But anyway, here's the uh, movie. It is called Money Electric, the Bitcoin Mystery. And uh, it is from the same director, Colin Hallback. He, he made the, the one I talked about, the QAnon one. And uh, I, I was riveted by that documentary. I could not get enough of it. And it really took me places. Uh, that was called Q Into the Storm. Also worth looking up if you haven't mm -hmm. seen it. Um, he's done a bunch of others like Monster Camp. You may have heard of um, Terms and Conditions May Apply. He's, just, he's always digging into like stuff that we take. We just hear about and we go, okay, cool. But we don't really think too hard about it. He likes to dig in and see what's going on. So he basically goes goes and does a deep dive into the history of Bitcoin, where it started. And it starts a lot earlier than you think. Like as early as the 80s, there were people working on the cryptography oh, really? that would eventually become this. Then there's the dude uh, known as, oh, what's his name? The Nakamura guy. Anyway, the one who the, the name that everyone claims invented the Bitcoin who has not ever been seen. And so this was a chance for him to say, oh, another anonymous uh, you know, a, a person, quote unquote, person that everybody kind of worships in in cryptocurrency that no one's met. Hmm, wonder what that means. Might be some bullshit going on. So he starts digging around and he talks to everybody from uh, the Samson Mao guy, who's really a, a evangelist for the for the movement. This guy named Roger Ver, who's like a on the one hand, he was supposed to be the the savior of Bitcoin, and it turned out to be a bit of a douche and got arrested for some stuff. Anyway, Peter Todd, Adam Back, a bunch of names you may or may not know, but they're kind of infamous in the world of cryptography, and they were known as the crypt. Uh, cr I forgot crypto, not crypto crew. Some name that's weird. Anyway, he digs in deep, interviews all these people to try to figure out who who this uh, mysterious Satoshi is. Satoshi Nakamura, that's his name. And nobody knows who Satoshi is. And everybody in the thing keeps saying things like, well, I'm not Satoshi, but also I am Satoshi. And like they're all kind of covering for each other and like throwing people off the scent. And it all seems like a way to, I don't know, keep the mystery alive so that well, Bitcoin itself stays alive. It's just like this weird back and forth. And by the end of this thing, like, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you Sorry. go ahead. No, I was going to say, it sounds like what I hear about Banksy, you know, the artist. Mm. That it's mm -hmm. a bunch of different artists. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. That thing's and never, that, that never gets solved either because no one's ever really, inter no one interviews Banksy. Nobody sees Banksy. Right. Yeah. It's a lot of, very similar right, stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, so. it's like this modern day, like, how can we absolutely fool people? That's the vibe of it. Now, there, there's a That's possibility they, they, they at the end of this thing, they kind of leave it with there is a possibility that Satoshi Nakamura exists. Um, but it is completely hidden and dumped his, you know, basically burned his Bitcoins. If he didn't, he's worth trillions today, um, but never comes out because a, a person who's worth trillions is immediately a target for a billion things, including death. So mm. there's that theory. But then there's a theory that a bunch of these other people, uh, including Adam Back, who's this really nice guy from from England, who's a genius at this stuff. That he might be him. Um, this guy named Peter Todd and a few others at the end of it. I won't tell you who they eyeball, but they take a bunch of stuff that they've all said, and it kind of points at somebody. And that guy's a real prick hole. He's a butthole. <laughs> and it just drove me. It made it, it was fascinating. Equal parts fascinating, this documentary, and equal parts annoying as hell, Ugh. some of these people, the way they behave. Um, and also how we as a people, did, like the Q1 did this too. People are, we are such easy marks for shit. Like mm -hmm. if something's big and has big money behind it and celebrity behind it and loud, uh, you know, well, it must be true then. It must be mm -hmm. this or it must be that because why else would it exist if it wasn't? We're so freaking stupid sometimes, the general public. And and I kept being reminded of that in this, maybe a li little well, less so than the QAnon one, but but it's so it's so like 
paints this picture that makes you then look inward and go, well, do I just see a guy with a lot of money and go, well, he must know exactly what's going on. Like some people do with, you know, well, big people like Musk or others. Like they just go, yeah. oh, well, it's obviously, it's like Gene, it must be Elon Musk why that rocket landed. No, it's like a thousand engineers who made that happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's yeah. just well, this it's whole. Well, like fake yeah. famous stuff, right? Yeah. Like Instagram and social media and like apparently the FTC is finally getting around to trying to stop fake followers and fake commenters. And there's there's certain times where I look at somebody's channel and I go, really two million? Mm -hmm. Like what? Like yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, no, there's definitely they they touch on some of that, but it's mostly. I mean, obviously, it's mostly focused on on cryptocurrency and its future. Right. And there's a the cheesiest thing in this thing. They had a an event for the Ethereum people who are like their chief competition in terms of a accepted cryptocurrency with Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Those people are really cringy like <laughs> I, I, they did a thing on stage at an Blonde event crypto that just, bros kind of thing oh brian i can't even they came out and did a rap on stage uh, it went as uh, it went as bad it went as bad as you're imagining it's so bad it made me just like <laughs> i posted a clip somewhere of it but anyway uh i would recommend it though i think this colin this colin or cullen is his name c-u-l-l-e-n colin hallback is a really interesting up-and-comer in the documentary space and his stuff is always good um, production value on this is great. They don't really hold back. He he brings receipts. He doesn't just make claims. Um, he's very investigative and really gets all up in it. And uh, I really liked it. So uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. That's Money Electric colon the Bitcoin, Bitcoin mystery. Where's that at? I think I saw, was this Max? H yeah, HBO on Max. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's an HBO original, um, which they have a history of good HBO original documentaries have always been good long before streaming. Um, so sometimes there's things on Max that are Max originals that are kind of crappy docs, but they're not HBO docs. They're yeah, like some other right. thing, Discovery or somebody else is doing it. This one is an HBO documentary. Originals, you can yeah. tell yeah. that it is. So check it out. Again, Money Electric, the Bitcoin mystery available now. Nicole, hey, I did, yeah. wa I did watch Bad Faith that you recommended. Oh, yeah. What'd you think of that? That was great. Yeah, that was really good. It was really good, I right? think I even... I think I bought it because I was like, I just want to watch it on Amazon. You know what's annoying is nobody, the people I need to see that one aren't going to see it. No. <laughs> right. No. And it's not what it's, they think it is. They think it's just a slanted thing against their particular belief, but it's not. It's like a no, it's not. a very deep dive over. It's about Christian nationalism, not yeah. Christianity. Yeah. It's a very, it's oh. very, very good. And the right people aren't going to see it. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, but do see it. If you, guys, you know what? We've been doing a lot of this lately. You watched one of my recommendals. I watched Brian's. Uh, I'm still in the middle of from, but I'm watching from, from loving it. Yeah. And I watched the documentary, the Casa Bonita one and loved it. Oh, my God. Oh, I need to watch sorry. the Casa Bonita one. You would really like it, Nicole. I, I can just tell yeah. it's your thing. You're going to dig <laughs> it. Lots of swears, though. So keep the kids wherever you want them. Oh, yeah. it, those kids hear more swears than I even realized. I was watching that <laughs> third, in third grade. Yeah. <laughs> Probably heard a lot of them in Casa Bonita, ironically. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> what uh, is this effing food? <laughs> don't say it in school. It's just a word. <laughs> That's true. Right. You hear the worst stuff at school. and uh, But we're not going to hear the worst stuff from Nicole. Oh, do you have anything you want to mention with Wood Whisper or any of that stuff going on? Uh, nope. We're just cranking along. Oh, I actually I do. I just released new shirts on our on our store. So nice. um, Oreo has become our shop mascot. And so I had some Oreo shirts designed. I even have uh, kids sizes. So if you want me to send you some shirts, I can do that oh. uh, for your grandkids. They're nice. Adorable. Oh my gosh. I would, so, they would wear them. Sure. They would. PWWstore.com and they're affordable. I went oh, nice. and looked at the Pee Wee Herman shirts. Yeah. $40 for a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm only charging $20. <laughs> so, so screw Pee Wee Herman's legacy and get these instead. Oh, no, it's just, <laughs> I'm just finding that shirts are I mean, like everything, it's doubled in cost. So yeah. if I try, I look for ways to keep the cost down. No, I get it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck with that. And uh, we'll see you soon for another Recommendals. Bye now. Oh. All right. Bye. And if Randy, if you're listening, we missed you. We don't know what you had, yeah. but whatever Hope it was. You're doing okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you'll be very busy over the next couple of months. Big anniversary happening at Blizzard. 20 years of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. 30 years of Warcraft. Holy shit. Wow. 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 Wow.
Wow. Wow. Uh, that's going to do it for today's show. I've got a quick, nice message to read. Uh, end okay. things out here. This uh, is from Omega 9. He says, through the stress of buying a home and anxiety is through the roof, I felt panic attack coming on and threw on an AirPod in my ear and familiar voices chatting away gave me something to concentrate on and calm my dumb ass down. Thanks for all the laughs, guys, Omega 9. Oh, that's good, man. It is it's stressful home stuff. And, you know, as someone who has panic attacks, I get it. Like for sure, yeah, yeah I that's hope. good. We can be, we we're happy to be that for you, and we'll always be here to be that for you. That's right. We commiserate, my good man. That's yeah. uh, going to do it for us. If you want to send your own messages in, eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. Texts and voicemails can go there. If you'd rather email us, the morning stream at gmail dot com, or the website will get you there too at frogpants dot com slash tms. Brian, that's it. Let's get out of here. What do you have for us for music? Well, got something here uh, requested by Tyler Hurst, who says, Hey, Scooter and Beaker, it's finally upon me. On October 16th, I'm hitting that half century mark. Not sure if I'm ready for it, but you're only as old as you feel, right? For this special occasion, I figured I'd let the cover master pick something for me. If it helps, I love Nine Inch Nails. They might be giants and everything grunge. Also, just want to thank you guys for the years of entertainment. I've been listening since 2005, been to Six Intertaculars, and love the community that you guys helped build. Plus... Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Also, also, and one more thing. Uh, also, can I get some clips of Nicole mispronouncing movie star names? Oh my gosh, house, we use Don Cheeto and Tanning Chatham all the time. Uh, let's see, Nicole. Yeah, Tyler's an old timer. We love him. Um, here we go. Guess what? And one more thing. And one more thing. All right, here we go. Here's Nicole saying. Uh, here's one. Dermot McRolney. Right, that's classic. Uh, here's her talking about a movie title. Bomba Duke. Bomba Duke. <laughs> and finally, uh, let's see if I can find one more. Uh, is this Peacock? Peacock. Oh, this is her saying Peacock. Hold on. Here it is. This is good. Shedwick. Sh- Kara Shedwick. Kara Shedwick. Shedwick. Yeah. Kara Shedwick. Shedwick. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway. Happy to play uh, Fantastic. All right. So, uh, Tyler, you love uh, Nine Inch Nails? Well, I'm hoping you're going to love this. Uh, this year, I helped kickstart an album put together by Ali Gertz. This uh, album is called Peeled Back, and it is a cover album of all the songs uh, from, from the... Shoot, which album is it from Nine Inch Nails? Or was it... Did we figure out it's like a bunch of different ones that, you, that oh, they uh... didn't just follow the hate, pretty hate, not pretty hate machine? Um, I can't remember. We talked about this, though. We did, yes. I can't remember. In any case, mm. it's a Nine Inch Nails cover album. And this is her cover of The Hand That Feeds. Uh, it's fantastic. Here's Allie Gertz and The Hand That Feeds. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Gilbert Gottfried's. Yep. Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> That's the guy. That's Doesn't, absolutely.